Peak TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Hello, and welcome to Homework Hotline. I am Jody Ingo. I teach seventh grade science at McKinleyville Middle School. Hi everybody, I'm Cassandra <laughs> Hayes, and I teach eighth grade math and science at Fortuna Middle School. And today, we're going to celebrate Pi Day. Now, I know that Pi Day is on Monday, March 14th, but I thought we'd just celebrate it early and have an opportunity to eat pie more than once. What do you think of that? I love pie. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I love pie and pie. <laughs> so I want to share a little bit with mm -hmm. you about what pie day is, if you had not heard of it before. Um, I've got a small slice of pie, some history and more here for you. Uh, pie day was founded in 1988 by physicist Larry Shaw and March 14th marks pie day. You might be wondering at home, well, why March 14th? And it turns out that the numerical date 3.14 represents the first three digits of pi. And if you didn't know, pi is an irrational number, meaning no ratio. It's a decimal number that goes on and on and on. And at this point, did you know they have not um, reached the end of I, pi? I did not know that. Here's some fun facts about pi. So ancient Greek mathematician Archimed Archimedes is most commonly credited with being the first to accurately calculate the estimated value of pi. And we're going to talk about what pi is used for. Albert Einstein's birthday is also March 14th. Pretty cool. Pi, or the symbol pi, it never changes. It's the ratio of the distance around any circle to the circle's diameter, and it's always 3.14. And according to the popular mechanics, as of 2021, researchers have calculated 62.8 trillion, with a T, wow. digits of pi. I'm guessing with supercomputers. With supercomputers, of course. <coughs> Absolutely. That's amazing. Pretty incredible. We couldn't count to 62.8 trillion in a lifetime. No, not if we dedicated all of our time to it. <laughs> so how do we use pi and what is it for? And as you see, I have a circle here and we can see there's a circle. Now we use the diameter and that bisects the circle in half and Half of the diameter is known as the radius. And so there's a couple of formulas there that we'll be working with in the future. Uh, we have the area of a circle equals pi r squared, so the radius is squared. And to find the circumference of the circle, we take two, multiply it by pi, and multiply it by the radius. And I have a fun way to introduce <laughs> to you the store, um, Pi, and we're going to read circumference and the first round table. All right, and I'm going to hold the book for the camera. Can and you you're say who the author is of that book? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, I believe it's pronounced Cindy Neuschwander and Wayne Gieman. Gien is the illustrator. Nice. Yeah. Amazing. So, oh. I forgot to tell you, we have a bingo board here. Okay. So every time you hear a geometry math term or a mathematical term, you'll go ahead and mark off one of the words and you can do that at home as well. Are you ready? I'm Put ready. Pen? I got my pen. Okay. Long ago in a land known as Camelot, there lived many knights and ladies. Their ruler was a mighty but gracious man named King Arthur. During many years of peace and good harvest, the people lived happily. The trouble began when they saw the army of their neighbors to the north gathering at the border. 
These people, known as the circumscribers, looked as if they might be preparing to make war. King Arthur called upon his bravest and most trusted knights to plan what to do. The knights rode as fast as they could to the king's castle. Sir Comfrance lived nearby, so his family came with him. Oh, there's a math term. There is. Would you like to mark one off? I would, but the camera's on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mark it off for you. <laughs> there we go. Sir Comfrance. Sir Comfrance lived nearby, so his family came with them. Sir Comfrance was married to Lady Di, who came from the town of Amateur. They had a son named Radius, another math term. Radius was very small and quite young, but his keen mind and boundless energy more than made up for what he lacked in height and age. After the first day of meetings with all the king's knights, Sir Comfrance sat with Lady Di. Oh, he groaned, my throat hurts. I have to shout to be heard at the other end of the long rectangular table. Everyone has to shout, and the king is very upset. Why don't you fix a table, suggests Lady Di. Okay, so we had circumference and radius. And radius. <clears throat> there we go, right above there. Excellent. Ooh, already getting close to bingo. How can we do that, circumference asked. Well, said Lady Di, you could cut it in half. Look, here is a drawing of the table. It has two long sides and two short sides. If you cut it in half and put the two halves side by side, you will have a table with four equal sides. I heard a couple more math terms in there. Okay. <clears throat> half. And that it at this point. Okay, let's see if we have some more. <laughs> Lady Di, what a good idea, circumference, called for the carpenter, Geo, Geo of Metri. Geo began working immediately. The next day, the new table was ready. Everyone commented on the wonderful square shape. However, another problem arose. We have geometry. If you, can we oh, cross yes, that off? Cross then geometry. that's actually in one of our rows. Ooh, it sure is. That we've already marked on. And square. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh, we're getting close in that column. At each corner of the table, the knights whispered to each other while someone else was talking. Sir Galahad exclaimed, King Arthur, how can we meet to discuss a solution when people talk secretly to each other? Sir Galahad is correct, King Arthur responded. We had come here to talk of defending our land against the circumscribers, not to talk in secrecy. After the meeting, King Arthur told Sir Comfrance a new table was needed. That night, Sir Comfrance told Lady Di about the problems with the square table. Lady Di thought a moment and then said, what if we cut the square table diagonally? We could put the two halves together to make a diamond. She drew a diagram and said, the king could sit at one end and you could sit at the opposite end. Everyone would be close enough to hear but the knights would not be in any tight corners. All right, so we have um, diamond, right? Yes. Diagonal, Lee. Did you talk about the triangles? Let's see. Oh, diagram. Do we have diagram on there? I think that is it. After seeing the plan, Sir Comfrance agreed that it was a good idea. Geo, the carpenter, said, In carpentry class, they called the shape a parallelogram. I will have the table ready by the morrow. The next day, Sir Lancelot and Sir Gawain were amazed to see a table in the shape of a parallelogram. The others liked it, but King Arthur was not happy sitting at the sharp point. The king let the knights have jousting practice and sword play while he spoke with Sir Comfrance. 
circumference. The point of the table sticks into me like a sword. We need to think about ways to prevent war. But this table makes me feel like fighting. Can you fix it? I will do my best, sire, said circumference. I heard another math term in there. Did you hear a parallelogram? I did, right above diamond. Ooh, look at this. All right. That afternoon, he stood by the field and watched the others joust. It was a beautiful day with blue skies and flags flapping in the breeze. Sir Gawain's flag was blue with a white cross. Sir Lancelot's flag was green with lions. And Sir Taurus's flag was green with an eagle. The flags were all in similar shapes. They were all triangles. That's it, said Circumference, a triangular table. Can we cross off triangle? And top right, and did they say shapes on this page? Yes, they did. Oh, look at that. We are getting so close. Circumference called Geo and explained. Geo said, if we cut the parallelogram table in half, that would leave two triangles. One triangle might be too small. So they measured the proposed triangular table and realized that four people could not fit on each side. Geo, let's think some more, said Circumference, and he went to discuss shapes with La Lady Di. Yes, said Lady Di, the triangles would be too small. So cut off the corners like this and make an octagon. Look, it will solve the problem. A few more that we have. Lady Di is pretty smart. She is. So octagon in the bottom left. Ah, thank you. There it is. When the knight sat at the octagon table, each one wanted a side all to himself. Eight sides and 12 knights who would share a side with another? They agreed that the king should have a side all to himself because he was our leader. But that left seven sides and 11 people. Knights, let there be order, said King Arthur calmly. We need to remember that we are here for the defense of our land. How can we talk at this table with its problem of corners and sides? Circumference, have the carpenter build a table shaped like an egg and perhaps then we will behave more like a flock. Circumference drew up plans for an oval table for Geo. This table is going to be harder to build since it has no straight edges, said Geo. I will begin at once. When the knights met again, they were all impressed by the oval table. Sir Lancelot suggested that they raise their goblets and drink a toast. All of the knights raised their goblets, but there was a great commotion from the ends of the table. The knights at the end of the oval table bumped into the king as they raised their goblets. No one had enough room. Some of the knights began to argue. Then King Arthur shouted, stop, I'll leave me until tomorrow, except for circumference. Shall we see if oval is on here? It sure is. Oh, look at that, there it is. After talking to King Arthur, Circumference returned home discouraged once again. Radius piped up. Father, when I have a problem I cannot solve, I do something else for a while. Why don't we go for a ride? That afternoon, Circumference, Radius, and Lady Di went riding. No one said much until Radius shouted, Father, look, a tree has fallen over. So it has, observed the knight. Don't you see, Father? There's your table. Lady Di got off her horse for a closer look. She stood on her tiptoes and stretched her arm up as high as it could go. Her fingertips just met the upper edge of the trunk. It should be big enough, she said. This part is as tall as I can reach, and the wood seems to be of good quality. Circumference summoned Geo to cut a cross section of the trunk to make it into a tabletop. Leave the bark on the outside edge, he told Geo. I like its rough feel. 
Geo and his helpers sawed through the huge tree trunk. Then they hoisted the heavy slab into an ox cart and off they went to Geo's workshop. Geo worked all night building the new table. Okay, we're looking for a cross section. Yes, we are. There we go. Must have been a redwood. <laughs> Must have been, <laughs> it is really large. When the knights met the next day, the table was finished. Everyone was content. No one shouted or whispered. No one felt cornered or trapped. No one was poked in the stomach and no one felt squished. Everyone had an equal position around the table. As they talked, they decided the best plan was to try to make peace with their neighbors. King Arthur was so pleased that he announced they would celebrate that night. Soon, everyone was enjoying the music, dancing, and banquet. Suddenly, the music stopped. A messenger rushed in and handed a sealed parchment to King Arthur. The king read it and smiled. Ladies, knights, and guests, I have excellent news. The circumscribers are not planning an attack. They only want to measure the area of their kingdom. There will be peace in the land. Hmm, did you hear a couple of math words in there? <laughs> um, so they wanted to measure the area yes. of their oh, land. Oh, look at that. You've bingo. got bingo. Let's see if we can. Does that mean I get a piece of pie? It does mean you get a piece of pie. <laughs> That's what I really wanted. <laughs> uh, there was also equal in here. And so we'll cross out equal. <laughs> Hooray, everyone cheered till the king held up his hand for silence. To honor these knights who gathered at this table to save our kingdom, let them henceforth be known as the Knights of the Round Table. Let us thank Sir Comference and Lady Di and their son Radius. They made this round table possible. Everyone cheered again. Furthermore, because Lady Di of Amateur has a reach that is equal to the distance across the table, we will name this measurement for her. We will call it Diameter. Ah. Yes. Let's see what happens with radius and circumference. <laughs> I am proud of radius too, added King Arthur. Someday he will become a fine knight. He may be small, but he has tall ideas. Everyone nodded and clapped. Let us call this small measurement from the center of the circle to its edge, the radius. Finally, let us not forget our clever circumference. Since it was his idea to leave the bark on the outside edge of our table, we will name the outside edge of any circle after him. Let us call it the circumference. I think we have a couple more words in here. We have diameter. We do have diameter. <clears throat> and maybe that's it, okay. Circumference bowed to the king as everyone rose from their seats and began cheering and whistling and stomping their feet. It was the happiest celebration that anyone could remember. Very nice. Isn't that a fun way to learn about circumference and diameter and radius? Very good. Great book. So well, the author... My first time hearing it. Oh, here we are. So the author actually has 12 books in this series. Oh, wow. And as people want to learn more about pi or fractions or cones, the author has written some fun, engaging books for that. And all of them um, are illustrated by Wayne Gian. Well, let's have some fun with measuring circles and uh, measuring the circumference. And for those of you at home, you can gather these materials. I just gathered materials from around my house. So you wanna find some circular objects, such as cans, jar lids, frisbees, coins, or paper plates. 
a ruler or a tape measure, paper, pencil, yarn or string, and a calculator. And so the first thing that we're going to do, Jody, is we'll trace each circular object onto a piece of paper. And we may have time just to do a couple so you can okay. pick one that you'd like to trace. Mm -hmm. And then we'll use our measuring tape to, I've got, All right. so we have a whole bunch of different items here. We have some lids, all different lids. Oh, I'll use mug. the keep cup. Yes, a can. Or we also here have um, a coaster. All right. So we can. We're going to trace our circle mm -hmm. onto the paper. And once we trace our circle, we can use our tape measure and measure the diameter. Mm -hmm. There's a marker there. That's a little. Oh, you've got a nice. Mm -hmm nice circle going there. Yeah, the marker might show up a little better. So I just have a tape measure that was lying around my house. I didn't have a ruler or anything fancy. So I'm going to use this to measure and mark my diameter. So I'm going to estimate where the center of my circle is. Now I noticed that this is, um, if I use inches, doesn't give me a, a really good number that's simple to work with and multiply. So I'm going to turn this over and use centimeters. And oh, this is perfect. It's seven centimeters. Nice. Yeah. So go ahead and mark my diameter. Would you like to mark your diameter? I would love to mark my diameter. Do you know our eyes are so sensitive we can see a couple millimeter difference? So when we're eyeballing the center, we're actually quite good at it. Oh, interesting. Yes. I did not know that. I don't think mine was quite there. I'm a little <laughs> up to the top. I shouldn't <laughs> brag yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did a great job on yours. Bam. All right. Okay, and then you want me to know how many. You know what, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if these are gonna be like fairly standard sizes because they're manufactured. I don't even know how to measure in inches because I rarely use inches. I find that using the metric system is much simpler. Okay, and then diameter is 8.1 centimeters. Excellent. And so now we're going to go ahead and measure the radius. Okay. Do we, can we do it mathematically in our heads? Ooh, I think we could. How would, what would you suggest? I would take 8.1 and divide it in half. All right. So the beautiful thing about our centimeters, I find it's really simple. So um, we can, we have eight and one hundredths of a centimeter. And so if you think about a dime, what is half of a dime? That will give us, I'm sorry, eight and one tenths. That will give us our... Um, so it would be... Our radius would be, if I think of this as money, which is sometimes helpful, so mm -hmm. you, that's what you were suggesting, yes. is if I thought of this as $8.10, so I figured rather than dividing 8.1 by 2, I would have $4.05. Excellent. And I have 7 centimeters over here, so if I took $7 and I divided that in half, I would have $3.50, or 3.5 centimeters and that is our radius. Well, it looks like we're getting close to time, but I want to show you quickly, if you have a calculator, we can calculate um, our, circum or our circumference and our area. Why don't we do the area first? Okay. So our area is pi r squared. So I like to write it out just so I know I don't miss a step, pi. And my radius is 4.05 squared. Ooh, can I do that in my head? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. And I will use your calculator yes, to let's fact let's check. Use the calculator. <laughs> so 4.05 times 4. Point, oopsies. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so we had 4.05 multiplied by itself, right? which is what it means to square something. All right, so we have pi times 16, 
how many places do you want us to you go could, out? Let's just go um, to 40 hundredths. Okay. Yeah, let's go to the hundredths. So then we take our answer mm -hmm. and multiply, multiply. It by 3.14. I want to go out to my 68 trillion decimal places. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for a while. <laughs> so here we have 51 and 5 tenths, tenths centimeters. centimeters squared. That is the area of your circle. And so to measure the circumference, you can just take a piece of yarn. Okay. And why don't we And we could do this technique on maps too if we want to yes. figure out our distance. So unravel a little bit here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's a pair of scissors if you'd like to cut it. Okay. I'm going to try to get it as perfect as I can. Um, could I hold it with my finger? Sure. Okay. And I will measure. Oop, I unraveled some of it. <laughs> Let's stick with working on centimeters. So it looks like it is 30 centimeters is the circumference. Lovely. So C equals 30 centimeters. And we could calculate that using now that we, since we also have the radius, we could calculate the circumference without measuring it just by using the formula um, C equals 2 pi r. Should we f double check ourselves? Sure. Do we have, maybe we have some time to do that? I think so, if we're quick. And you okay. help me, because I don't know how to work your phone. So we have 2 pi mm -hmm. and times 4.05. Hmm, we're a little off there. It might be because we rounded. It could be because we rounded, because we get 25. Or it could have been my lack of perfection on laying this string out. Could be. Oh, also, I guess with yarn, I realize that it's a little stretchy. Oh, yeah. So it could be that as we were measuring, we stretched it out a little bit. So when I'm doing math or measuring, I usually do try to ask myself, does it make sense? Yes. And like, does it, or, and if it doesn't make sense, what might my error have been? And we definitely learn more from making mistakes than getting everything right all the time. That is for sure. It actually, <laughs> research shows that our brain actually grows when we make mistakes and Mine must figure be out our error. <laughs> figure out what our error, errors are. So it works better. Awesome. So here we have some pie Yay. to enjoy. What kind of pie is that? This is a uh, lemon raspberry pie. Wow. Made locally by a slice of humble pie. One of my favorite pie places. So, thank you. Happy Pie Day. Happy Pie Day. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and I hope you can enjoy some pie.